Hey everyone, it's Alexander Robinson. Welcome to the channel, and this is my review for Miss Marvel, the Disney Plus miniseries that debuted last summer and is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The series follows a Pakistani-American high school girl named Kamala Khan. She lives in Jersey City. She is obsessed with the Avengers, like she is the ultimate Avengers fangirl, and her idol is Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel. So one day when her and her friend Bruno try to plan a trip out to Avengers Con. She has a Captain Marvel costume all ready to go, but she has one particular item in that costume that activates special powers within her. And so the rest of the series involves Kamala Khan basically coming to terms with these new powers, learning to control them, and finding out that the bangle that she wears on her arm that activated these powers uh, has some deep connection with her family's history. So even though this series debuted on Disney Plus last year in 2022, uh, and even though these reviews for Disney Plus Marvel series don't get good views, I wanted to review this anyway because first of all, we got the Marvels coming out this weekend, which as of recording this video, I have not seen it. I'm trying to avoid this movie at all costs until I actually see the movie for myself. So I'm trying to stay off social media as much as I can because I know that awful backlash that Captain Marvel got is coming for this movie here, regardless of whether it's good or not. But the main reason I wanted to talk about Miss Marvel, even if it's over a year later, is because this was my most anticipated of all the Disney Plus shows set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Even though I'm not an avid comic reader, Kamala Khan was always one of those newer Marvel characters that stood out. Like, I knew info about this character, I knew her personality, her powers, so I was just super excited for her to finally become a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe universe and for me the end result is maybe my favorite of the Disney Plus Marvel shows. The biggest reason why this show succeeds is the same reason the first Iron Man succeeded, the lead character. Iman Vellani plays Kamala Khan and this is really the most perfect casting in the Marvel Cinematic Universe since Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man because Iman Vellani has talked about how she herself is a fan of the MCU. She dressed up as Miss Marvel when she was much younger, when the character was brand new, and she's also said that people have mistaken her for The Flash, which is, uh, funny, <laughs> but also sad in a way. The point is, is that she was pretty much Kamala Khan from the start. So her coming into this role to actually play Kamala Khan is perfect. Uh, Iman Vellani is very likable, very charming, uh, and she's just a huge bright spot within this series. Like, I know the MCU's reputation has sort of sunk a bit, but I will still stand by Iman Vellani being one of the best parts of this new era of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And yes, I am well aware that there have been a lot of changes from Kamala Khan in the comics to this interpretation here. For one, she's not an inhuman. She's a mutant this time around, which apparently she was always considered to be a mutant at first, but then was made to be an inhuman. And her powers are slightly different. She does manage to create giant fists, giant feet, and elongate them, but they're more projected through light rather than actual stretching powers or embiggen powers the way that Reed Richards powers are usually depicted. I get the impression that this change was made because Marvel may have been too scared to actually make that jump into these types of powers because with every Fantastic Four movie, Reed Richards' abilities have been wildly unconvincing. So yes, while the changes to her powers and even her background from an inhuman to a mutant have been met with mixed criticisms, it didn't really bother me a whole lot because Iman Vellani, again, is so good and so charismatic that she carries this series. And I also really love the dynamic that she has with her family and her friends, more specifically with her family members. Her mother, who's overly strict but is also trying to protect her. her father, who I should mention character-wise, is very charming and very likable. And the middle of the series is where we get a lot of the heavy family dynamics, with Kamala Khan learning more about her family's history and how it connects to the Bengal, and a lot of elements involving Pakistani-American families that I don't have any knowledge about, so I'm not the right person to talk about those aspects. I also really like Kamala Khan's friend group. Bruno and Nakia are really well-defined characters, have a ton of personality, 
And a lot of the scenes involving these three really reminded me of the best aspects of Spider-Man Homecoming, which for me is still my favorite of the Marvel Cinematic Universe Spider-Man movies because it has that great high school feeling to it, it's low stakes, and that's pretty much what this series is. It's like an extension of Spider-Man Homecoming, right down to a specific visual look that the first half of the series has. There's a lot of creativity put into a lot of the visual flair of the first three episodes, huh? where there's a short film that Kamala Khan makes and uploads to YouTube that's pretty much the big finale in Endgame but done with paper cutouts. There's a lot of animated moments to it. There are sequences throughout Jersey City where the walls are animated. It's really, really creative. The only downside though is that a lot of those imaginative visual styles are gone in the second half of the series. And I get it, we're in a different location in the second half of the series and there's a lot more stakes this time around. So it doesn't really work to have those elements from the first half and the second half, but they were still cool and I missed them. Another issue I had with the show is the absolutely horrendous CGI, whether it's Kamala Khan's light powers in the finale or the dying skeletons. Like those skeletons, uh, when certain characters are killed off, look like straight up cartoons. And now it's important to remember that this series came out last summer in 2022. Uh, this was around the time that a lot of reports were coming out about how Marvel's visual effects team were being overworked and underpaid, and they had not been unionized at that point. So watching the finale especially, with those awful special effects and the knowledge of how hard these special effects teams were working, it makes a whole lot of sense. So I'm glad they're unionized right now. That is a major win, not just for the Marvel visual effects team, but the entire visual effects industry in general. So I'm glad that they got that win. And it's a shame that because they had so many movies and shows coming out in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that they overworked those VFX artists to hell. Regardless of those criticisms though, I found myself really loving Miss Marvel. I think it's tied with WandaVision as my favorite of the Disney Plus Marvel shows because WandaVision has some great themes about grief and learning how to cope with them that I think work really well. But Miss Marvel is still a ton of fun. It's lighthearted, it's creative, it's got some great characters and a fantastic lead with Iman Vellani. This is worth seeing in your lifetime. If you've seen Miss Marvel but haven't watched it in a while or you didn't watch it because not a lot of people did, you should definitely give it a shot because it's highly underrated and I think if you're a fan of Spider-Man Homecoming, you'll definitely be a fan of Miss Marvel. It's a shame that this series had to come out when it did because the first half of this series was overlapping with the second half of Obi-Wan, which was a big hit numbers-wise. And while I love the Obi-Wan Kenobi miniseries, uh, this is much better. It brings in a new character, it's more creative, it's more inspired, whereas Obi-Wan, as good as it is, it treads on familiar ground that we've seen before within Star Wars. So again, if you haven't seen Miss Marvel or you haven't finished it for whatever reason, I'd say give it another shot because it's highly underrated and a lot of fun. And there you go, that's my review for Miss Marvel. Uh, by the time this review goes up, uh, it'll be the day I'll be seeing the Marvels in theaters. Uh, so it may be a couple days before I actually review the movie, but keep your eyes open for an instant YouTube Shorts reaction as soon as I walk out of the theater. But until then, I wanna know what you guys think about Miss Marvel. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Letterboxd, Threads. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, have a good day and take care of yourselves.